Okay. What, what up, up, folks? How are you guys doing out there? We're great. Fantastic. What up, Sports Nation? <laughs> oh, boy. This is going to be a fun one. And this is our very first. What? Interview in a car. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> hey, folks, we want hey, to be hey, I'm a person. I got to fit it in when I got time, right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, <laughs> when you make the U.S. national team, I mean, of course you have to, right? Yeah, and I am planning a wedding as well, so lots of things going on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So Whose wedding are you planning? Mine. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, you just, oh, I gotta take these off. Don't Congratulations, know, much better. That's well, awesome. Not really, but. Just picked up my wedding dress, so lots of fun things happening. Oh, <laughs> we gotta God. see it. I can't so show you. You have to wait until the day, October. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So the first thing is, did did uh, did he like give up, or did you pin him and he decided? Um, he's actually he's a basketball player. I know, I know. But he's a big dude, so I've actually tried to wrestle him, and he's just too big. His arms are too long. His legs uh, are too long. You got to pinch the leg to let him loosen up, and then you take him in. Yep. Choke him out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lauren, you're um, a wrestler that went to Wood Creek High School in Roseville, California. California. <laughs> but uh, what thought you started in wrestling? Did you start in high school? Did you start before that? So yes, I did start before that. At my at my elementary school, I went to elementary school in Auburn at Evie Kane, and um, I started in sixth grade. I actually was telling someone just the other day. I remember the first weight I ever weighed in and competed at was seventy two pounds. So <laughs> now uh, here I am, definitely not seventy two pounds, but still wrestling. <laughs> Me neither. It's okay. Seventy eight. That's right. <laughs> So my, my dad was a coach and he wrestled all throughout high school and my brothers both wrestled and um, it was kind of like a way of life. My brothers, I always grew up with the attitude of if they can do it, I can do it. And so um, I remember at, at lunchtime, I, we would go to all the meets and things like that. So I had been around wrestling for, I don't know, since before I can remember. And we were at lunch and the coach was there getting signups for practice. And I walked by and he's like, Mason, you're coming, right? And I was like, yeah, heck yeah, I'm coming. I went home. I was like, mom, I need you to take me to wrestling practice. <laughs> and then it, that I uh, never stopped going to wrestling practice. <laughs> so I got to ask, mom's reaction, was it one of these? Oh, no, not another one. Or was it? Yeah, damn right. You're gonna. It was. She was like, I couldn't just have one kid that didn't want to do this sport. Because <laughs> it does. It takes a lot of time. You ask a lot from the people nice. you love. So, But she loves it. She's one of my biggest supporters now. So it's great. That's did you phenomenal. did you play any other sports or was it just straight wrestling? No, I did. I um, ran cross country and track and I pole vaulted. I did. I was kind of an odd doc. I did distance and pole vault in track. So, um, but I loved it. The pole vault was just the fun part and the distance was because I did cross country and I was good at it. And then I also nice. played soccer growing up. So, and, and I think like when I was little, we, we played all different kinds of sports, softball, all different things. So, but those were the the few that I stuck with and then wrestling has now been the one that I've been doing. So what were, um, you know, obviously had quite a wrestling career. What were some of the biggest challenges that you faced through oh, being a wrestler? There were lots. Um, some personal, some athletic, some, I don't know, lots of different kinds of things. Um, a big challenge like one of the biggest challenge was actually deciding where I wanted to wrestle in college because when I graduated, there weren't, I think now there's like 75 colleges that have women's wrestling and, or no, there's more, there's like a hundred and something and 75 clubs. I think there were maybe like 30 or 40. And so I had to pick, and a lot of them were really small schools and I didn't want to go to a smaller school. My high school, Wood Creek had like 2,500 kids, 2,300 kids. So I definitely wanted the legit college feel. Um, and it's hard when you grow up and you think like, oh, I'm going to go to college and get like this, go to, I don't know, Cal Poly or, or one of those schools that you know, and you've heard of. And then you're like, oh, if I want to wrestle, I have to go to Simon Fraser. I've never even heard of that before. But so deciding, and I did have scholarship offers for cross country and track as well. 
So first it was deciding if I wanted to wrestle. And then it was deciding. Beat people up, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, and run out in the heat. No, thank you. <laughs> so um, I decided I wanted to go to SFU, but that was hard. I was really nervous to leave the country. And like it was, and I didn't know. Now I'm like, oh, it's not really that big of a deal. It's not any different. But I was like, oh my gosh, I have, I'm, not only am I moving away, but I'm, I'm, I don't have any family there. I have to get a new phone plan, a new bank, all that kind of stuff. So that was a pretty big challenge. A nice winter jacket. Yes, absolutely. And good rain boots. <laughs> Those were key. <laughs> so, but that was, I loved it. I wouldn't have changed it for anything. I had an awesome time there. Um, and then at the end, COVID was a huge challenge. I, we had to leave because I was in Canada. I came home to the U.S. And that was a really big challenge. And I, it, I, was really upset actually I was like I didn't get my last year I had to leave like I didn't I didn't get to leave on my terms I was kind of forced and then um flash forward a couple years this last January I actually went back to SFU to finish out my eligibility and that was a challenge even deciding if I wanted I, I was living here in Utah I had a job I had to quit my job leave my boyfriend all these things and that and I decided that's what I wanted to do and I'm so glad I did that. So there were lots and lots of challenges. Those were just a few along the way, but they've definitely made me better and helped me to see like who I want to be as a wrestler and as a person. And I'm grateful for them looking back, but in the moment was definitely not grateful for them. Yeah, no. I, I... Wait, dude, okay, let me dude, try and spit, spit this out. out. Let, me, let me just point something <laughs> out. So lean back just because it's fun. We got to learn, teach this guy about dark shirts and black backgrounds because this floating head thing is something interesting. <laughs> Go ahead, spit it out. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so Simon Fraser, I, I know we just kind of talked about it, but what was your draw to going to Simon Fraser? I was just curious. Um, they had a really, really good women's program. So um, Helen Maroulis, Victoria Anthony, Mallory Velti was there at the time. Dom Parrish was there at the time. They had a lot of uh, Justina. Those were just U.S. girls. And there's Canadian girls. Um, the coach is an Olympian. Um, and it, I was just drawn to that. Like, I knew if that was where I wanted to, if I wanted to get better, that was the room that was going to help me do that. And it definitely was. The first six months, I got my butt whooped every day in practice. We had national champions, world team members, all these really high-level girls. Um, on the team. And that was a big draw there. I also wanted to go to a school. Like I said, that was a, a larger university and SFU had like 30,000 kids. So um, it wasn't like a smaller 1,500, whatever, 5,000 kind of a school. And it was beautiful. I loved it. I went up there and I fell in love with the scenery. That's a big thing for me is what is there outside of wrestling to do? Because wrestling's a big part of my life, but it's not the only part. And I knew if I was going to flourish as a person, as a wrestler, I needed that extra stuff. So there was hiking and the city is beautiful. There's shopping and lots of things to do. So I went up there and fell in love with it. And my coach actually, there's, if you talk to a lot of SFU girls that were um, recruited, I was recruited by Mike Jones. He was the coach when I was there. Um, if you talk to any girl that was recruited by Mike Jones, they will probably say something along the lines of Mike told me, I probably don't want to like, eh, you might not want to be here. This might not be the school for you. So that like reverse psychology must've worked because we all went there, but it was awesome. I loved it. So do you have, um, future aspiration? I mean, getting married, do you yes. still want to stay around wrestling? Are you still competing? Are you going to get into MMA? What is, where, where are we heading? Time out. Well, I'm, not, I'm, not, not, I'm still wrestling for sure. Yeah. No, but I mean, I want the, she's full, on the U S national team. I know, but is there like a real path that we're talking about? Yes, yeah, most yeah. definitely. So I actually just went to national team camp. I got back a few days ago. So super good. Really awesome to be with the team and those girls. They were the world team members were preparing for worlds in September and we were helping out um getting coaching from the national team stuff like that so that was really awesome um my next few months looks a little more chill because I am getting married in a few months so that that's like uh 
I got to balance both of them, give myself some grace when it comes to planning a wedding and all that kind of stuff. But then we'll start back up and we have the U.S. Open in April and the, the whole season kind of starts over again. So making there's like different levels. So like this year is, is a world like this year after the world championships is another world championship year. So 2023, uh, make the world team. That's a goal. Then you have 2024 Olympic team. And then we'll reassess from there for, I'm for sure going to 2024, possibly 2028. Um, it kind of depends on, uh, what my husband and I decide and if we want to have kids, whatever we want to do. So he's very supportive. He actually just asked me yesterday, um, why do you want to go to the Olympics? Or like, 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 what do you, why, why? And I was like, no one's ever asked me that before. <laughs> so it was super cool. He, and he, we were talking about, okay, what, what do we have to do? What are we sacrificing? Because it's, once I get married, it's not me anymore. It's us. And so if I'm going to ask him to help me, cause I am going to need help. Like I said, you have to ask a lot from the people who you love to support you. Um, so he's like, Let, let's do it. Like, let's see, let's, let's write down, let's make the, make a goal and make little goals to achieve that goal. And let's do it. So he's super supportive, but yeah, the Olympics is, that's, that's the end goal, but there's lots of little goals to get there. Well, and so you said like becoming a mother, right? So yeah. in the Olympic thought process, does it, it change the timing of things? Like I want to do this. I still want to be a mother and still compete in, in eight. Like there's, there's a couple of things there that you may be a mom and be an Olympian like Dara Torres was and came mm -hmm. back like that. So all that's playing in your mind and he's yeah. a basketball player, you said. He is. Well, not anymore. He was a basketball player. Okay. So he yeah. can stay home with the kids while you're competing. He could. You're right. Um, he did tell me he wanted the kid by 31. So that's my only, my only timeline. So yeah, I could, there's different ways to do it. I obviously want to be a mother, but not yet. Like that's definitely, I don't want to have kids in the next three years. So they're not coming anytime soon. Um, but maybe after the Olympics, maybe we try for a kid. And yeah, I come back to it. Maybe we wait until after 2028 to start. I don't know. It just depends on, like I said, after 2024, we're going to reassess and see where we're at. I think my, wait my a minute. Original... She's still got like 10 years. I know. So, well, I mean... And that's why I think my question was really leading into the pathway. Come on, but come also, on. is is wrestling always going to be in your life? Are you going to want to be a coach at some time? Or is that, you said the end game is, is Olympics, but are, are you interested in continuing to grow the sport for women oh for sure like I don't think there will ever be a time when wrestling's not a part of my life um even now like I work for flow wrestling I do the women's side of the social media and to me that is that's awesome I love that and that's something that was definitely needed before and them reaching out hiring me on as a contractor has improved our women's coverage there's there's still so much more we can go and so much more publicity and popularity to grow the sport but it's just a start. So that will always be a huge thing. I'll, any little girl, I'm like, you should try wrestling. It's awesome. Like just, you don't have to do it long-term, just try it to see if you like it. So I'm, it's always gonna be a part of my life. Um, coaching is a possibility. I'm, it's not a yes, it's not a no. Um, but it's, there's no way that I'm not gonna be in wrestling for the rest of my life. For those that don't know, Flow Sports also does volleyball a little bit of volleyball um they cover the mary nutter classic which is softball which is based out of southern california um in cathedral city and they also do a great job with wrestling so um just in case anybody wanted to know and catch you you mm -hmm. know see what's going on i just wanted yeah, to give a shout out of of or, you know <laughs> anyway so i got coach paris three questions for you are you ready uh oh Here oh all go. right here we go so what do you do well uh in a wrestling sense is that what you're talking about yeah okay um I think I always have this is kind of wrestling I usually have a good attitude and I'm very close, so I'm, I want to be better and I'm going to take advice from whoever will give it to me nice what would you do differently oh um I'm actually working on this, <laughs> trying less to care. I mean, I don't care what people think, but part of me does. So trying to figure out, like, I'm doing this for me. And I'm, I'm very torn between like, oh, yeah, I don't care. Like, I'm me. I know I'm great just how I am as a person, as a wrestler, whatever it is. 
Um, I don't need recognition, uh, like outside recognition, because I can like feel that for myself. But also, it's it's nice. So like trying to to walk that line and that balance of, I want recognition. I want to be liked. Everyone wants to be liked, but then I don't need that as well. So just continuing uh, walking that line. And the last one, you ready? And it may be the same answer, and that's okay. What do you think you need to work on? What else? Um, there's some moves I need to work on. We actually at practice this morning. Um, we slowed it down a little bit. It was it's a very interesting time when you're like in the off season, and it's not like go go go. It's like oh, let's take this this piece of the puzzle and we'll slow it down and improve that piece. So things like that, where I'm like I'm going to take a little bit out of this today. And it's slower. It's, it usually takes longer. It's not as glamorous necessarily, but it's it's needed. So that kind of continuing with doing that. It's a question. It, it, this is kind of separate from the Coach Parrot questions, but I always like to hear how long it takes an athlete to slow down from going to high school to college, college to pros, you know, so on and so forth. For you, how long did it take you to slow? slow it down going into college and then to the national team um you mean like slow down those like take those pieces out and slow that down or yes yes well in co- I like I said one of the reasons I went to SFU is because I knew it'd have great partners great coaches and my coaches were really awesome about taking little things and helping us to improve them working even even just five minutes at practice so in college it was like really awesome we we did that pretty often um and also I've been I've been wrestling on the senior level since I was 19 so I've been here for a while I've been here for five years so it took me five years to make my first senior world team or senior national team but I did it so um after college it was kind of similar I did I did move home and I was working with Sarah McMahon and some other people while there and then I moved out to Utah and now I'm at the Utah RTC so those different transitions of coaches also broke things down differently. Sarah McMahon was an amazing technician, probably one of the best I've ever worked with. And she was really good at like, oh, just lower your stance a little bit or do this, this, and this. And, and working with her in that sense really helped me. Definitely that whole time home during working with different coaches, Tori and Tyus, um, all different kinds of coaches. Um, they helped me to kind of refall, and I helped myself too, to refall in love with the sport. And then moving back out to Utah, uh, they're great coaches here, Urkeen, Greg, uh, Chambo, all those people have helped me to also slow down and improve little things. Because at this point, at the level we're at, it's not big things, it's, it's just little things and what people do differently. So they've been uh, crucial in helping me to stop and slow down and fix those little things and continue to move to move forward and make a senior team, hopefully make a world team, things like that. You know, in some of the things that you said, back in the, his questions, it made me think about your sport is very unique in the fact that you face multiple different people in a day or over a couple of days at an event. A lot of times athletes are studying tape and their opponents. Mm-hmm. How does that work with wrestling? Are you able to study your opponents when you don't know when the next one is Mm-hmm. Or are you more relying on just your skill? What's the balance there? Um, it's a little bit of both. I actually don't love watching other opponents. It makes me nervous. I don't, I don't love it. Um, I actually don't really love watching film, but I do it because I have to. I'd rather look at myself and look at the things that I do and improve those things. Um, but yeah, you can, if you go to a tournament, you have like, you know, your top three, top four girls. You have an idea of who you're going to meet. Sometimes the seedings come out early. So you have an idea of where you'll meet them in the bracket, things like that. So you can look at those opponents you will have and and do a little bit of scouting, do a little bit of stuff on them. And sometimes like I had a true third match. So I knew for three weeks that I was going to wrestle this one girl. So we, we worked on stuff, but it wasn't really necessarily like, Oh, I want to like work on this so I can beat her. It was like, no, I want to work on this. So I get better at this because I know that I do this well. And if, and if I do this as best as I can, I know there's no one who can stop me, that kind of a thing. But, but it is important to know, like with other girls, like, oh, this girl has a really good fill in the blank move. So watch out for that. Or if you reach up with your left hand, she's going to take it and this and this and this. So maybe reach with your right. 
little things like that. That's what I like to hear about my opponents. Um, but I don't really, I don't really need to know much more than that. Do, do your coaches come into play there? Are they able to, on the side of the match, go, she's going to go for this, and you hear that and you know to defend it away? Is that how it might play a little more? Um, yeah, that too. You're honestly the coach in your corner is an extra set of eyes. So before the match, I don't know. It's like vibes, like <laughs> this sounds weird. Good vibes and and like positive energy stuff like that, kind of calming. I always like them to tell me a joke, stuff like that. Um, but then, yeah, and they'll tell us, okay, this girl reaches with her right hand and this and this. If we don't know, maybe halfway through the match, I'll come to the corner and he'll say, hey, like, she's really stepping hard with her left leg. Like, once she steps, you can you can shoot in. So they're an extra set of eyes to, yeah, kind of tell you, like, hey, every time you're reaching with this hand, she's grabbing it. So you reach with the other hand. Or every time you do this, you're stopping. So here. So it's, and it's me too. Like, hey, you aren't finishing that move. That's why you haven't scored. It's not necessarily, oh, just her. It's It's both. So that my coaches for, from all my coaches actually have done a really great job, but my coaches here at Utah Valley, they do a really great job of like honing in on those tiny little details that makes the difference. Do you, do you, uh, what is your favorite moment so far in your wrestling career? Like, what is that moment you'll, you just remember every time you could be at the young, just starting out, like you won this amazing match, the exhilaration, you jump out into your coach's arm, whatever it was. What was that moment? Um, okay, definitely as a sophomore in high school, I won the state championship in California. That was pretty awesome. That is like the first thing that comes into my mind made me like want to keep coming back to wrestling. I wrestled um, this girl I had wrestled a few weeks before, months before, and I had lost to her. And she was supposed to win and blah, blah, blah. And that year had been an especially tough year. Um, with personal things and things like that, family stuff. Um, and so uh, I remember it was like the last period. I was down two to three. And with 30 seconds left, I took her down. It was four to three. And I just remember like, don't let go. Don't let go. Like, you just have to hold her down. And then I won. And it was so exciting. I wasn't supposed to win. It was kind of like an underdog story. Super awesome. And I remember I ran up and gave my dad a big hug. It was it was really amazing. So that was really cool. And then uh the underdog story, I had a my dad's best friend top right next to him and he called me Rocky from then on. So <laughs> that was pretty fun. That was a great story. What would you tell a uh, young Lauren? Young Lauren. Who uh I tell this to a lot of the girls that I do private lessons with or run camps and clinics with. Um, I ask, there's two things I would say. The first thing is I ask myself two questions after every practice, after every tournament, whatever it is. The first one is, did I learn something? And that could be a move, a strategy, whatever it was. Did I learn something? I learned that I needed to work on my single leg. That could even be it. And the second one was, did I have fun? And that could be while I was actually wrestling, like my dad always says winning is fun. And he's very right. Did I, did I have fun? Or did I, I like, I don't know, have fun with a teammate or a friend or my parents or whatever it was. So did I learn something new? Did I have fun? And if I can say yes to those, then it was a successful practice tournament, fill in the blank. And then the second thing I would say is to learn to enjoy the day to day more than the tournaments and the wins and losses, because when you're just focused on the wins and the losses, the, when you win, it's amazing. But when you lose, it sucks. And things like that. Like I, I remember a few years ago, I was very upset because I've never made a world team. I've never made a national team. And I, I've been on this senior circuit for years. And I was like, what the heck, this sucks. And COVID and different coaching and moving up, changing where I was, was super good for me in understanding that I need to enjoy this whole all of it the whole process of it going to practice getting better things like that and asking myself those two questions helped me to enjoy that process in making new friends and learning new things even if it was like a tiny little thing where I was like today at practice I want to work on this and if I even did it just once at practice I I can be happy even if I got my butt whipped the rest of practice so learning to enjoy the whole process and realizing that the wins come and the losses come, but they don't stay. Do you ever write a journal of those two questions after every practice? Just 
and look back and I don't but that's a great idea I do journal but not every day after practice but I really like that maybe I'll <laughs> take that into my regime <laughs> all right the coach para questions I would have my athletes answer that after a game, after a practice, but when they would answer it, it'd be in journal form and they could mm -hmm. turn it in or not to me the next day. Cause I always trying to get their mindset straight and right and always positive. And it's huge to know what you can work on. I mean, I can tell you all day what you need to work on, but if you know what you need to work on, you're going to focus on it more. So yeah. Just a little something. <laughs> I like that. Hey, anytime. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Lauren, you're you're amazing. Thank um, you I'm actually, so much. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Absolutely. Uh, I can't wait to see what you're going to do and head on to the Worlds, kick butt, uh, go on to the Olympics. Congratulations on on the, the wedding. Um, we're two of the best guests for a wedding. You oh, yeah. Crashers. Have. I mean, guests. Sorry, I get that mixed up. <laughs> All right, maybe I'll send you an invite. There you go. Oh, God, this poor girl doesn't know what she'd be in for. I'd wear my plaid suit. Oh, yeah, oh, it's God. on. Oh. <laughs> Don't stick to his right. Dude. You yeah. stick to his left. <laughs> right. If you notice, the hands have been going flying. And uh, anyway, Lauren, you're amazing. I, I just, it's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you uh, so much. Yeah. Definitely. Hey, from all of us here, What Up Sports Nation, we want to thank you. Thank Lauren. Have a great day and a better tomorrow. What up, folks? What up? I got a question for you. It's not, it probably won't be on there, but do you think that women's wrestling would go the way of AU sports? Um, what do you mean? What's AU sports? So athletes unlimited does a different brand of volleyball, lacrosse, and softball for women. So mm -hmm. it's team, but it's individualized. And each person huh. gets certain points for the who, what's, when, where's, and how's. Now, they obviously, the top person has the most points. So therefore, they make the most money. Huh, I don't know. I mean, so that's so, it's so early now. Yeah, too. it uh, is yeah. because women's wrestling just started to sprout. It could be interesting to how that goes. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think there's a bit of a future for it? Uh, yes, I think so. I think I'm not really sure when that would come into play, but yeah, like yeah. you said, women's wrestling is just kind of sprouting. Like not even all 50 states have it sanctioned, which is absurd. I think there's 20, 31 that have it sanctioned. Really? So, yeah, crazy, right? So in Pennsylvania, uh, I think Iowa just sanctioned it. Utah sanctioned it two years ago. So these, these, that's like the first thing that they're working on is getting high, like a, a legit sanctioned high school state meet and things like that. So California's had it since I believe, I don't know, 2010 maybe? I don't know. Oh, but yeah. um, so that's, I think the first step is to like sanction it at the high school level and like start building it up from kind of the ground up. So when I was in uh, element, not elementary school, middle school and high school, I was the only girl that, I mean, there was other girls that come out for a week or two and then they wouldn't stay. And now there's full on girls teams. So there's a, an entire team of girls, which is totally yeah. different. I, I was never on a women's team. I mean, I went to nationals. I went to Fargo one year. So that was my first women's team, but I was never on a legit women's team until I went to college and now here in Utah, there's every high school has a full girls team with a full lineup, which is incredibly exciting and so awesome. And then I sanctioned. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. So I would just think that was huge because they're a massive men's, they have a massive men's team and, and they're just what really oh, well. Yeah. yeah. I was so them sanctioning it is, is amazing. And then hopefully yeah. other one power five schools like that will kind of follow their lead I agree. And fingers crossed I think the first thing is going to be sanctioning it at the high school level and then getting colleges to to have a team those mm -hmm. are like I think top two and then after that I mean there's like I don't know every girl on the national team usually has a sponsor um and there's wrestling sponsors and there's like 
like Adidas, Nike, stuff like that. So, and especially with NIL, there's more opportunity for more sponsors in that way. So I think the, those first two are going to be the priority. And then after that would be like a professional league. I think that question and the way that you answered it may have to be on the um, interview because that was <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, there was a lot in that. Yeah, there, there's a lot of good. It in was that. a nice discussion in that whole process. So yeah, it, the, the, it's going to change in your time while you're kind of leading that direction and you are the other girls that are kind of making the, you guys are the pioneers of this. Yeah. Right now. And you're huge yeah. advocates for it. Mm -hmm. And that's super cool. I, I feel very fortunate to be like uh, considered a pioneer because I know there were women that came before me. Cause honestly, I had a great um, experience wrestling. I know a lot of women, I mean, I think it was because my dad was a coach. My brothers were wrestlers. I was known and I worked hard and, and I was pretty good. So I was fortunate enough. I was never treated harshly. I was never looked down upon, whatever it was. But I know a lot of girls have had that experience, which is really unfortunate. So I know there's a lot of other women that have come before me that were pioneers that didn't have it as good as I did. And then there will be women that come, girls and women that come after me who will say, for my generation that there were women who didn't have it as good as we had it. And I'm looking back and I'm like, they didn't have it as good as we had it. So it's just like with improvements in each generation of wrestlers, it's so exciting. So I think we're probably going to have, like, I feel like there's been years of pioneers before me and there are probably going to be years of women who are considered pioneers after me. So it's really exciting to be considered one of those like early women wrestlers, pioneers. So it's, it's very exciting and it makes me want to like, Part of it makes me a little jealous when I see all these girls getting go to Iowa and have all this fun stuff, but I'm so happy for them. I love my college experience. I wouldn't change it, but I'm so happy for them. And they're going to have even more opportunities than I had. Yep. Are you watching what's coming up behind? Are you seeing, like, you know, Laura, uh, Leah Brown and from kind of a local thing and, you know, you're older yep. than her, but do you see what's happening? We have, the reason why I bring that up is like Leah just went off to college and she, in her interview, talked so much about the girls coming up behind her, Yeah, which was so impressive. That's kind of where I was going with your path and then the back and, and all that. Yeah. She was talking about, we're trying to create something amazing for other girls and look at what we have coming behind me. Yeah. And you're starting to say the same thing and yeah, yet you're going further ahead, which is so cool. Yeah, I think that's going to be the the cycle for a couple probably 10 or 20 years until it gets real like there's a, a substantial amount of girls and women in the sport because yeah like I see I see girls like Leah like Elena Evaldi she's at Del Oro those big names who I've kind of been able to I would mentor in kind of a way like I've, I've practiced with them I've helped them I've maybe talked to them about college things like that with not just those two included many other girls from our area all around the country whatever so it's it's cool to kind of get to mentor them and help them and then see them do that for the next generation because I'm sure my mentors and my coaches feel the same way about me like they have helped to mentor me they've helped to coach me and I'm doing that for the next generation so they can do that for the next generation so I hope it's it's really cool to be in this position of both being mentored and then being the mentor so it's really exciting like I do private lessons now with girls out here in Utah. I coached a little third grade through eighth grade team. They were so cute and they loved me. And it was cool. One of my neighbors, um, he was neighbors with the, one of the girls on the team. And he said, she came home and she was so excited. She's like, it's all girls team. And the coach is a girl. And this, she was just so excited. And I'm like, that warms That's my cute. heart. And I, I told them that I was leaving for college and they were all so sad and it made me sad. So it's really cool to be able to influence those those girls in the next generation. I love it because it's building um, women confidence as well. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I I, this is really yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, I I got stumped at this point now because wow. it's just such an amazing thing to see uh, the progression of a sport. Yeah. That's been so male dominated, and then the girls had to compete against the males. 
Yep, they didn't yep. have a chance. To, they had to compete against the guys, and now it's creating their own thing, and it's it, the excitement of it is an unbelievable, and where it's going, and look at what what she's doing. So, I think we not got only that, I know we do. got another one, but, <laughs> but I got one more thing. Yeah. Not only is it great for the women, but she got to beat her brothers up and not get in trouble <laughs> by mom. No, no, no. Don't be saying that. They're going to come after me. I never <laughs> <laughs> they, they beat me up for sure. If you ask them, they would say, there's no way Lauren could take me. And they're probably right, even though they're out of shape. I think, I think just like their pride, they would die before they let me beat them. But, I want to know, is a wrestling family, is Festivus a huge holiday for you? <laughs> because it doesn't end until somebody gets pinned. Do you even know what Festivus is? I will say at Christmas, at Thanksgiving, someone's always wrestling. Somehow, every time, I don't know how, someone always ends up on the floor wrestling with, with like a carpet burn, and someone's like, oh, what the heck? I love it. <laughs> I, love, I love it. It's been oh really fun. Different, like my sister-in-law has come into the family, my fiance come into the family and they know nothing about wrestling and, and kind of get to teach them. And my oldest brother's wife, uh, my fiance was over and he, I was telling him kind of about cutting weight and making weight and traveling and that kind of stuff. And my sister-in-law was like, ha ha, I'm not the only, I'm now not the noob kind of a person. So it's fun <laughs> to bring them in and kind of show them my world, which is really cool. And I have yeah. awesome, my whole family, even my sisters-in-law, my fiance, those who haven't grown up in it are so supportive. They come to meets, they, they watch on flow, they watch on the live stream. So they're super, super, yeah, uh, and my rest. In our one -up I know. And <laughs> and we're here. No, trust me. We are really tiny guys. The camera just adds like 147 pounds. That's all. <laughs> you know. All right. For it. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so again. much you're amazing i, I don't want to end this but unfortunately we, we do we this. got another interview <laughs> it's probably getting hot in the car i know really that works well lauren you take care all right thanks thank you guys it's been a pleasure bye, bye.